OK, so in this case, what I want to do is graph y equals x squared plus 2. And again, when graphing a quadratic, what we're going to do is we're going to use a table. To do this, what I want to do is make sure I create my um, table of values. So I'm going to have a table of values, and I'm going to have x and y coordinates. Now remember, it doesn't matter what points you pick, but we have to make sure we choose points that are going to be to the left and to the right of our axis symmetry. Looking at the form of this quadratic, we know that our axis symmetry is going to be at 0. And I will verify that for you here in just a second. Now what we need to do is just pick points to the left of 0 and to the right of 0 that we're going to evaluate for our x coordinates. So I'm just going to keep it simple. And I'm going to pick points that are going to be very close to my axis of symmetry. Um, then what we're going to do is also just want to know, let's see, a is 1 and c is equal to 2. So I'm just going to kind of get an idea of what, how a and c are going to be um, affecting our graph. So to graph, we're going to use a coordinate axis. And our coordinate axis has two axes. We're going to have our x-axis and our y-axis. All right. And so we have coordinate points at negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. But remember, to graph our parabola, a parabola is a set of points that has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So if I choose my x-coordinate, I need to figure out then what is the y-coordinate then that is a part of this parabola or this quadratic. So to do that, I need to plug these x-coordinates in into my equation to find the y-value. So I have y equals negative 2 squared plus 2. Now notice my um, use of parentheses. I'm putting parentheses around this when I square it because I'm not doing 2 squared and then multiplying by negative 2. I'm actually squaring negative 2 squared. And what's really important about that is, well, the squaring function is always going to make it positive, right? So therefore, you can, you can tell that it doesn't matter if the number that I square is going to be positive or negative. It's still going to give me my exact same value. And that's what's so cool about this. Really, really cool, right? Um, what's so cool about this is because now when I go into this, I know that to the left and to the right, the squaring it doesn't matter if I square the negative or the positive, I'm going to get the exact same hour. And that's the important part about that axis of symmetry, right? Remember, the axis of symmetry is your symmetry of your graph. The left side is equal to that right side. It cuts the graph in half. So let's go and evaluate our answer. So I have negative 2 squared is 4, plus 2 is 6. Here I have negative 1 squared is 1, plus 2 is 3. 0 squared is 0, plus 2 is 2. 1 squared is 1, plus 2 is 3. And 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6. So you can see that it's symmetrical about our axis symmetry is at 0. Now let's plot these points and let's see why is it that the axis symmetry is at 0. So I have two points, negative 1 and negative 2, positive 1 and positive 2. And I'm going to go all the way up to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I go up to negative 2, positive 6, negative 1, positive 3, 0, 2, over 1, up 3, and over 2 up to 6. All right, so when I graph my parabola here, notice that the graph is going to continue in this upward direction. And you can see that this dotted line, when I said, remember I said the axis symmetry is x equals 0, because I'm not moving the graph left or right, but you can see that that is, that is going to be the dotted line that a graph is symmetrical about. So my graph continues infinitely into the positive direction, but it has a lower minimum point right there, which we call our vertex. So when I want you to label the vertex, what I want to do is I want to label that exact point. When we can see the vertex is a point at 0, 1. The axis of symmetry, which we've already talked about, for all quadratics that are in the form of ax squared plus c is going to be x equals 0. It's a vertical line in the form of x equals 0. Now, when talking about the x-intercepts, we need to see where does the graph cross the x-axis. Well, you can see that this graph does not cross the x-axis. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But we can just say there are none, and it's only an x-intercept. And then we have y-intercepts. Actually, we're going to learn why they're going to be plural. Our y-intercepts, um, the graph crosses at the y-axis at 0, 1. And that's at a point it crosses. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph that equation. Thanks.